Live from 42nd and 2nd, this is New York's very own PIX11 Morning News. So 17 million people tuned in to watch Meghan Markle open up about the struggles that she faced with royal life. An interview also pulled back the curtain on the slights of women of color that they have to overcome really on a daily basis despite our accomplishments. Meghan's close friend Serena Williams actually tweeting how she knows firsthand the sexism and racism institutions and the media can use to vilify women and people of color color, I should say. And Bernice King, daughter of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., says the Duchess of Sussex experience is, shows royalty is not a shield against racism, which she says is a traumatizing threat to the mental, physical, and economic well-being of millions of people. Megan admitted the microaggressions that she endured traumatized her, and there are many other women who can relate. Joining us this morning is diversity and inclusion strategist Lauren Wellesley Wilson. Good morning to you, Lauren, and thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. So first and foremost, what jumped out at you watching the interview? It was very fascinating, and I think we were all so appreciative to be able to have her insight as to her experience. I mean, I think that the media didn't accurately portray what she went through, so it was really good to hear from her point of view. What really stood out for me was the fact that she um, understood her mental health, she had a grappling on it, but she asked for help and wasn't able to get the help mm. that she needed. Right. That was really alarming. Um, so, you know, so often people don't ask for help when they are troubled or they're experiencing thoughts of suicide. Um, that was really, really shocking to hear. And it was alarming and surprising that um, the people around her weren't able to get the help that she yeah. needed. So in essence, she essentially said she didn't feel protected and and she wasn't. Yeah, Quite almost true. like she was trapped behind those palace walls. You know, you have worked as a communication strategist for the Obama re-election campaign and been on the front lines of changing the way people of color, especially women, navigate in the media. Megan kept it very real during this interview. Um, I want you to take a listen to a clip. In those months when I was pregnant, all around this same time, so we have in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security, he's not going to be given a title, and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? I don't know how they could expect that after all of this time, we would still just be silent if there is an active role that the firm is playing in perpetuating falsehoods about us. Words. I mean, that is quite revealing, uh, and especially to endure this as you are pregnant and going through all of those emotions and thoughts and hormones that your body's going through. So help us understand how, how you, one, you think she handled that interview, and, and what can we learn from these microaggressions? Well, she did a fantastic job. job. I couldn't imagine being in her shoes. It was no surprise who Harry married, so they shouldn't have been shocked or those questions shouldn't have really been asked. Mm. They know her race, so um, that's obviously problematic in itself. But on a day-to-day -day basis, women of color do experience microaggressions. This was um, flat-out racism, yeah. but microaggressions are the subtle, um, the subtle experiences of discrimination that could be masked in a form of well-intended meaning or understanding, but really they are offensive. So some examples are um, oftentimes black women share that they change up their hairstyles often. Mm -hmm. It's um, asking about your hair length, touching your hair, invading your personal space, inquiring um, certain things about where are you from? That's a question that a lot of people get is where are you from? To imply that maybe you weren't born here in the US, um, if you're of a different background or a different race. These are subtle things that happen in the workplace so often, and it makes the people who are not in the majority race feel othered, yeah. feel not welcomed. Um, and there's so much of that that people experience that does not allow them to advance in the workplace. Um, the work that we do under ColorCom Incorporated, we focus on advancing women of color in the communications, media, marketing, and advertising space, and working with companies on diversity inclusion to combat microaggressions to do diversity training internally to make to get uncomfortable because it's one of those conversations 
that's not going to be comfortable. Right. It's going to be awkward. You are going to learn through that experience and through that process yeah. and be willing to be uncomfortable so that you can learn. Yeah, you have to be uncomfortable, right? I just want to ask you, where, where do you see this actually taking place? Do you think that it is, I know we're out of time, but do you think it's actually taking place in more male-dominated industries? And, and what is that uncomfortable conversation that needs to be had now? To be honest, I don't think gender has anything to do with it necessarily as it relates to microaggressions that have to do around race. Um, it happens among people of color to other people of color based off of the stereotypes that you come to learn through the media, through what you see on television, through characters, through stories, through, you know, sometimes your own experience, but a lot of times not even your own experience. So it's not just, um, you know, it, it can happen among all races, all people. Mm -hmm. Really, it's unlearning some of those things that we've been taught our whole lives about people that we really haven't interacted with or experienced. And I think that's very key there. And I'd love to have you back to talk about it because it's one thing to open up the discussion about the problem, but you've hit on some of the ways to find a solution. And I'd love to dive deeper into that and finding out how people can get around this and stop the microaggressions, but also answer some of the questions that they're genuinely wanting yeah. to know to get to know someone being, you know, what is your background? Because maybe if you're from a country that I'm, you know, from, then maybe we have a connection. Yeah, I think it's all about a genuine connection and really getting to know the people you interact with, the people that you work with, and to not um, impose the self-imposed stereotypes of what we've come to learn. It's really about unlearning and really going with our own experience. Right? Yeah, for sure. Right. Lauren, you should... I'd love to come back to talk about it. Yes, absolutely. From there, welcome We'd to love to have back. you back. Absolutely. Lauren, thank Great. you so much for being here today. Appreciate it. So, thank you so much for absolutely. having me. Absolutely. You too.